Good afternoon from the kitchen folks. Today I'm going to attempt to make a pineapple and mango sparkling wine. Here are my key ingredients. I'm using four litres of pineapple juice from Concentrate. This is emulating the turbo cider method of using fruit juice from Concentrate instead of the actual fruit. I'm also flavouring my wine with my protein mango flavoured flavour drops. These are really powerful and very, very good. In addition to these ingredients, I'm gonna make a strong brew of tea for some tannin. I've got 800 grams of brew sugar and I'll be using some spring water. So it's time to throw this lot together. I'm gonna to add some spring water into my brew sugar. I want to dissolve this, so I'll need to warm it up a little bit. Just let that filter through. And I'm going to add some into my tea bags to make a strong tea. I'm not putting too much water into the tea bags, but I want to make something which has got some tannins in it, just to give the wine a bit more body and flavour. So I'll put some heat on this. The brew sugar is really fine and it does dissolve fairly easily, but I'm just going to give it a little bit of a work around with this wooden spoon. As the water heats up that will also accelerate the sugar melting. While I'm waiting for the sugar to melt and the tea to brew I'm going to get my pineapple juice into the demijohn and it's as straightforward as pouring it through a funnel. Wine making doesn't get a lot easier. I've recently just made a pineapple and hops wine and it's turned out excellent so I'm hoping that this will as well. The pineapple and hops wine was made from actual pineapple fruit. This is my first time using pineapple juice from Concentrate, but fingers crossed. I've got my first two litres of pineapple juice now in the demijohn. I'm going to add the My Protein Flavour Drops. So you'll note that the bottle comes with a pipette, so you can drop, and one full pipette equals 15 drops and I'm going to put three pipettes into the demijohn. That will give it a really good mango flavour. I can see the bottom of the pan now, so the brew sugar has melted enough. I'm going to turn the heat off. I'm also going to give the tea a squash to get the maximum flavour and tannins out, but this is also just about done. The tea's done and I've removed the tea bags from there. I'm just going to pour it into the brew sugar. I've got my sweet tea here. This is now going in the demijohn via the funnel. And then I'm topping up the demijohn with the third litre of pineapple juice. As it turns out, I'm not going to need the four litre of pineapple juice, but there's enough fruit flavour and enough sugar for this still to make a good wine. Now my demijohn is far too full. I'm going to pour some out now so I can take the original gravity and I know that my hydrometer tube holds 250ml so that's where I'm going to begin. And that's exactly 250ml. The temperature of this is too warm to take the gravity. The gravity needs to be taken at 20 degrees so I'm just going to put this to one side for now and come back to it later. For my yeast I'm using Lalvin EC1118 Champagne Sparkling Wine and Cider Yeast. I use this loads, I get good results off it, so I stick to it because I like it. I'm going to put a generous heaped teaspoon in. And you know what? I'm going to put a little bit more for good measure. The yeast is going to get extraordinarily happy. There's so much sugar and warmth in this, it doesn't take a lot for this to activate. It will form a kraus and a foamy head on top and that's likely to come out of the top. So to begin with I'm going to use something called a blow-off pipe just in case it does and then once the blow-off pipe is no longer needed I'll put a normal airlock in. I've got my hydrometer in, the mustard's cooled to 20 degrees and I'm starting off with an original gravity of 1.104 which is a nice, good, high original gravity, which will hopefully produce a good strength wine. 
Just an update six hours later from the utility room. And there you can see the Krausen has formed nicely. And if we look into here, there's a steady stream of bubbles coming out of the blow off pipe in the water. So all is good. I'll give it a couple of days like this and then I'll just put a normal airlock in like I've got in my other brews. Okay, I'll catch you after the brew's over in a couple of weeks time and then that will be the clearing video. Good afternoon from the kitchen folks, it's pineapple and mango wine clearing day. Let's have a look at it. It's been in the demijohn for seven weeks. It fermented absolutely furiously for the first two weeks and then reasonably well for another two weeks. And then since then, it's just slowed down and slowed down and slowed down. I'm getting about one bubble in the airlock every minute now. So I think it's time to clear it. So it's bung out, siphoning tube in. I'm holding the tube in place with this handy clip and I've got it just above the sediment line. So I will get a bit of sediment through, but that's fine. So let's do it. Yeah, smells okay. I've read that pineapple smelled a bit funky, but that smells okay to me. I'm using Clear It Wine and Beer Findings from Young's. Two-step process, bottle A, bottle B. So I put a teaspoonful of bottle A in now as this lot is going in there. And that's my guesstimation of a teaspoonful. And there we go, the bubbles in the siphoning tube tell me that this is over. Some clip. So I've got the wine and I've got Finings A in here. I'm just giving it a little swish so it all mixes. Right, what I've got to do now is leave this for an hour. So I shall pop the airlock back in and we'll come back and have another look in an hour's time. So I'll see you then. Well, an hour has passed and Finings A appears to have had little, if any, effect at all. So I'm just going to simply pour it now back into the original Demijohn, which I've cleaned out. I've got a funnel in the top of the Demijohn. Yeah, Finings A has had no impact. And maybe this is going to be one of those wines that doesn't clear. Now, I, I think it, it will clear, but... I'm surprised that Findings A has done nothing, I must say. So Findings B, I'm going to add equivalent of about a teaspoon into there and then continue to pour this in. Okay, so here it is now in the original Demijohn, which has been nicely cleaned out. Just give it a bit of agitation, get it mixing. So I'm going to pop the airlock back in and I'm going to leave this now for two or three days and see what effect the findings has and then hopefully I'll be bottling. So I'll catch you then. Good morning from the kitchen folks, it's pineapple and mango wine bottling day. So here it is, it's been clearing for five days. I think that looks uh, clear enough to me, you can see the garden through it. Um, nice colour. Today I'm going to be bottling into a mixture of 750ml and 375ml champagne style bottles and I'm going to begin by adding some priming sugar. So to each of the 750ml bottles goes one of these which is the equivalent of a good heaped teaspoonful. When I add the wine into the bottles the yeast which is left in suspension in that wine will react with the priming sugar and it will cause another small fermentation which is what will give the wine a bit of a sparkle. Now in the smaller bottles I'm just adding half of the amount of what went into the larger bottles. So I've got my priming sugar in my bottles, now it's bung out. Siphoning tube in. So note that I'm holding the siphoning tube in place with this clip, which means I can control it 
and the bottom of the tube is just into the sediment line but that doesn't matter because the first bit that comes out is going into the hydrometer jar. Let's rock and roll. And into the bottles. Well, it still smells good. I'm hoping it's gonna have quite a nice flavor, but you can never tell. And there we go, bubbles in the siphoning tube. That means that the siphoning is over. So I've got the wine in the bottles and I now need to add the bungs. I'm using plastic bungs, which I can recycle over and over. And I've softened them in very hot water because it makes them easier to push into the bottles. I've got my bungs in place, I now need to add cages to keep them in place because when the secondary fermentation kicks in in the bottles for the carbonation, it builds up pressure. <clears throat> so this prevents any unwanted explosive happenings, we could say. In other words, bung missile accidents. And I've seen my fair share. Right, that's nice. So I'm basically using recycled cages from champagne and Prosecco bottles. They're good for about four or five uses before they break. You don't need to watch me doing all this, it's repetitive. So I'll catch you in a minute. Okay, there's my bottles bunged and caged. I just need to give them a rinse under the tap now to get any sticky off, because I need to label them. Okay, that's my wine bunged, caged and bottles washed. I now need to take the final gravity of this. And that has sank nicely. And I've ended up on a final gravity of 0 0.992. So that's a good end result. So it's time to work out the final alcohol by volume. So I take the starting gravity of 1.104. I deduct from that the final gravity of 0.992 and that equals 0.112 and then I multiply this figure by 131.25 and this is going to be strong. Wow, I finished on a 14.7% wine. That is rocket fuel. So there's my labels just in a nice little template on Microsoft Word. Just going to print these off. Okay, I'm just labelling my bottles now. Just try and get them nice and even. Like them to look nice. Take pride on the outside as much as the inside. And there we go. So welcome to the conservatory. It's a south facing room. It's summertime so it stays nice and warm in here, even on a grey day like today. I'm going to condition my bottles in here, which means I'm going to leave them in here for two weeks. I'm going to put them with these ones underneath here. And what the conditioning process will achieve is the carbonation within the bottles. So it will give the yeast time to um, eat the sugar and to give it a sparkle. So I'll be back in two weeks time when it comes to opening and sampling. So I'll see you then folks. Good evening from the kitchen folks. It's pineapple and mango, hopefully sparkling wine, opening night. So am I going to get a fizz? Am I going to get clarity? Am I going to get a good smell? Am I going to get a nice flavour? 
I don't know. Let's find out. So I'm just removing the cage and in doing so I can see that there's been no movement of the bunk so that doesn't look like it's risen that's not a good sign am i going to get any kind of pop hmm <coughs> bit of a damp squib is there going to be any sparkle let's have a look well there's some bubbles now, it doesn't look amazing i must admit that it's uh, it's cloudier than I thought it would be, and the bubbles that I did see, I can't see now. It's got quite a dry and, and funky smell. Not the best smelling wine I've ever had. Let's have a taste. Wow, that's strong. Whoa! Right, the pineapple comes through now. Weird, is how I'd say it. It smells like it should be a dry wine, but it tastes it's medium sweet. It's a 14.7 medium sweet wine. I'm just I'm not getting it. When the ABV goes so high you think all the sugars have been eaten. But the pineappleiness is coming through. If you'd asked me to blind taste test it, I would have guessed pineapple. Now, as far as the sparkle goes, I can't call that a sparkling wine. I'd be a liar if I did. But there is that mild effervescence on the tongue. And I think if this was left for longer to condition, maybe another two months or so, it might possibly develop something of a sparkle. Because I've had this before with my fruit pastels turbo cider, if you saw that one. That wasn't that sparkling when I first opened it. Two months later, it was really sparkling. So I'm wondering if that might be the answer with this one, that it just needs to condition for longer. Now it's been in the bottle for a month so far. So perhaps it just needed to be in the bottle for a bit longer. I don't know. I mean, usually wine's two weeks to four weeks maximum. But anyway, it doesn't smell the best. It doesn't look the best and it isn't sparkling. But it tastes good. It's a it's a pleasant enough taste. I must admit it's full. It's a really full flavour. And surprisingly alcoholic at 14.7%. So I'll see you later, folks. Cheers. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www dot mosshomeandgarden.co.uk I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films it really is very much appreciated if you haven't already done so please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload you can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk please click on the red subscribe button when you've done that a little bell will appear if you press that also then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming then you might also like my travel channel which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv Again if you could subscribe to that channel it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. -S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.